Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this channel, Everyday Data Science, is all about trying to learn the different concepts involved in data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I am going to solve this question on lead code regarding account balance and try to walk you through how we can develop solutions to such problems. The difficulty level of this question is medium. Okay, so let's jump right in. We are given a table called transactions with four different columns, account ID, day, type, amount, and these are the data types. The combined account ID and day columns is the primary key for this table. Each row contains information about one transaction, including the transaction type, the day it occurred, and the amount of transaction. The type column can take only two values, deposit and withdraw. We are asked to write a SQL query to report the balance of each user after each transaction. So you may assume that the balance of each account before any transaction is zero and that the balance will never be below zero at any moment. Okay. The order of the result should be in ascending order by account ID and then by day in case of a tie. Okay, so let's go through this example, right? So for a customer with account ID 1, right? So uh, if you see, this is already arranged in increasing order of day. So 7th of November, 9th of November, 11th of November. So deposited 2000, withdrawn 1000, deposited 3000. So after depositing 2000, the balance would be 2000 plus, right? Then withdraw on 1000, the balance would be 2000 minus 1000, that is 1000. Then again, deposit 3000, it would be 4000. Similarly, for this, deposit 7000, so 7000 because this is another customer. So 7000 and then withdraw on 7000, so the balance would be zero, right? So if you see, this is a case of, uh, you know, calculating running total partition by account ID, right? So if you see, this is the output, right? So for one uh, deposit 2000, withdrawn 1000, so the remaining balance is 1000, then deposit 3000, so the balance is 4000. For second, deposit 7000, and then withdrawn 7000, and you get the balance to be zero. Okay, so basically uh, here, if we use window functions uh, and you know do a partition by account ID and then sum these amounts, then we can uh, get the running total, right? Uh, but before doing that, we need to make sure that we, you know, add a sign, negative sign wherever there is withdraw, right? Because if you add 2000 plus 1000, it is going to give you 3000, not 1000, right? But when you are withdrawing money, you should, you know, make this amount to be negative because you're withdrawing from the account, right? So let's do that first. So from this table called transactions, right? What we are doing is we are returning all the columns, right? Let's return account ID, day, type, amount, and then we can make a fifth column stating that case when the type is deposit, right? So leave it as it is. So then you just return the amount. So it is going to be a positive sign. Uh, and Else, if it is not deposit, since the type can only take two values, deposit or withdraw. So you deposit, you return the amount as it is. Else, what you do, you return minus one multiplied by the amount column, right? Then you end the case statement, alias it as, like you can write whatever, like let me, you know, just for the clarity purpose, write me as amount with sign. Right. So now we have this. So basically what this will do will return everything and then add a fifth column called amount with sign. And basically 2000 will be 2000 with since this is withdraw, this is withdraw. So it will add minus 1000 and minus 7000 here. Rest everything will be same. Right. So let's, uh, you know, store this in a common table expression. So with CTE as we add the entire thing in parentheses. Right. Now using this, using the common table expression, what we can do is we can return the account ID day and then calculate the running total, right? So return the account ID, the day, and then we need to use uh, window functions, right? So we, as we said, we are calculating moving sum, right? So rolling sum. So you create the sum of which column? not the amount column here we are summing with amount with sign right so that for withdrawal when you sum so it sums 2000 plus minus 1000 rather than 2000 plus 1000 right so you sum the column amount with sign 
and then since you are writing in window function you always need to write over clause and then since for different account ids or basically for different users you need to have balance separately right so here if you don't add partition by what will happen is that 2000 then 1000 redrawn so 1000 then add 3000 4000 then again 7000 is added right so it would be 10000 but this is a different customer so what how does the balance of one customer gets affected by another customer it shouldn't right so we need to create partition so partition by account id right account id then since you need to create the rolling sum so you need to uh, you know in, uh, order your day column in ascending order right so order by the day and once you do that then you need to calculate the rolling sum now here we need to use the rows rows between uh, syntax here why because here we need to give or tell the sql like which is the frame or window frame that we are uh, using to calculate the sum so for example for this row right the sum should be only for this current row right so 2000 then for uh, this one so 2000 plus minus 1000 for this one it should be 2000 minus 1000 plus 4000 right and then for another customer it should start with here right so here if you see the window is you know changing with every row so what you do is you write rows between when you start from the very first you write unbounded preceding and uh, wherever your cursor is row and how do you signify where wherever your cursor is you write current row and what is the uh, name of the column in our in your output it's balance so you alias this as balance and since our output should be ordered by ascending order in account by account id and then day so you the last thing that you do is order by account id and day okay i have two questions here what if instead of you know uh, you know doing this order by here we do order by here like when when we are you know storing this in a common table expressions we make sure that our table is pre you know uh, sorted in ascending order by account id or day because account id and day are also in this right because you are returning everything and uh, transactions has account id and day so what will happen then and second question here if you see there are two order buys right so order by in this window function as well as this window function which one of these takes precedence L let me know in the comment section right so let's go ahead and run this okay so this is accepted our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it to see if it passes all the test cases so yeah this passes all the test cases better than 94.66 percent of all submissions right so yeah this is how we solve this again like it was a very you know even though it was of difficulty medium but like it was a pretty simple question all you had to keep in mind is that when you are withdrawing money you are basically reducing your balance so you need to do first that secondly you need to uh, make sure that you are creating partitions based on different users and make sure to order by days because we are calculating rolling sum and yeah so this is how we do it let me know guys if this video was useful and until then i will see you guys in the next video